Hi, I'm Andrea Shuey. I'm a pattern designer and I have been designing for Simplicity for about 26 years. I mostly do their costume patterns and because of that I'm often asked by people, why can't I lift my arms for certain bodices and it's usually fitted bodices. I have an example here of a standard bell-shaped sleeve and I've tied the waist here to make it a really good example. You see you can't really lift your arm with a standard sleeve. Now most modern garments don't fit tightly like this so it's not an issue. You just lift the sleeve and the garment comes up with it. But with a fitted bodice you're not going to have very much sleeve modification with a modern sleeve. If, if you look at these pieces this is the standard shape for the front of an arm, arm's eye and the back of an arm's eye. And this is your standard sleeve pattern that's low in the armpit, high at the shoulder, and back down low at the armpit. So I'm going to show you some things you can do to this modern pattern to give yourself a little more arm mobility. So this is the same bodice I showed you before without the sleeves. So you can take a look at how low this arm's eye is. This metal plate represents what the actual arm is and you can see that the stitching line here is about an inch and a quarter below the arm's eye. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of muslin here and pin it to this bodice and I'm going to mark in I'm going to mark in where this original stitching line is and then I'm going to mark up here where I would like the sleeve to be. It's interesting that to fix an arm that feels tight you actually have to raise the armpit and make it tighter. This gives you more mobility because you're giving yourself more fabric up here. This is the piece that I just marked from that sleeveless bodice. This is what I want to add to the underarm here. This is my first modified pattern. I have the pencil lines are the original stitching lines from the commercial pattern. And right here I wanted to raise it up an inch and a quarter. So I've raised the arm underarm point up an inch and a quarter the same as my muslin. But I need to make a gradual line up to the shoulder seam. And I use a French curve at home but these are already done for you. Now is the sleeve going to fit this new arm's eye? No it's not. The sleeve needs to be altered as well in the same way. So I need to raise the underarm for the sleeve as well. So the first time I tried raising the underarm of the sleeve the same amount that I raised the underarm of the bodice. Seems like it would make sense, right? So I walked my seam allowance and if you've never walked a seam allowance this is a really, really useful technique is I go by my stitching lines that are here and here and I just, it's very nice if you can see through your paper and I went with my new stitching line on the green line which is the one that's up an inch and a quarter and I started walking it along as if I were sewing it. Just walking along, walking along, staying on the green line, staying on the green line, staying on the green line and I come all the way up to here and I stopped there and that's my shoulder line. And this pattern is allowing a half an inch of ease, but this is going to be way too much ease. The sleeve is not going to fit well. Hmm, so I said I need my sleeve seam a little smaller, so I decided to raise it up even more. And this time I raised it up two inches and I'm going to walk my second choice, which is same thing, 
walking along the stitching line, checking. And indeed, it brought it almost to the point I want. So I have come up with a rule of thumb for when doing this. If you're going to raise the underarm of your bodice, you need to raise the underarm of the sleeve about twice as much, and they will almost always fit. This is that pattern sewn up, and if you remember the original pattern, I could lift the arm about this high. I can now lift this arm up to about 90 degrees. So now this garment has a sleeve you can lift, but it's pretty different from a modern sleeve now. As you can see, this original pattern is very low on the underarms and very high at the shoulder. But this one I've modified has become straighter. It looks kind of like a man's shirt sleeve pattern, but interestingly, it looks very much like sleeves were cut about 100, 120 years ago. Because I make a lot of costumes, I spend a lot of time looking at old dress patterns, and one of the best books for seeing old dress patterns is a series made by Janet Arnold called Patterns of Fashion. I want to show you a pattern from the 1860s. This is the dress. And if you look here, this sleeve, this, it's a two-piece sleeve, like a, like a coat sleeve, but the top sleeve and the undersleeve look almost the same. The underarm is so high to allow for this lady who's wearing a very, very tight bodice to lift her arms. The upper and lower sleeve are nearly the same. A modern sleeve would have a much higher dome here and a much lower dome there. But when you lower your arm wearing a sleeve like that, it's, it's a little bunchy under the arm and people wearing modern garments don't want that. Um, but if you are making costumes for people who want to dance, if you're making something for theater, or even if you're making an evening gown that fits tightly, you might want to make a modification like this, but maybe not one so severe. I've done an in-between version I want to show you. The other one I'd raise the arm hole an inch and a quarter. This one I've raised the arm hole three quarters of an inch. and. You still get quite a bit of mobility, but it hasn't distorted the shape of the sleeve. So this would be a better modification if you were making it for a modern garment you want to wear every day as opposed to a dancing or theatrical costume. Here are the pattern pieces. The purple line I've raised up 3 quarters of an inch on the back bodice, and I've raised the front bodice also 3 quarters of an inch, so they're the same. And I used my rule of thumb. I have raised the underarm of the sleeve double what I raised the underarm for the bodice. So I walked my pattern pieces like I showed you on the other one, and the arm's eye is just the right size for the sleeve. What happens if your garment's already finished and you can't lift your arms and you want to dance in this or some other thing? What do you do? Well, I'm going to give you some ideas. First of all, the first thing you can do is pull out your stitching. I have originally stitched these uh, sleeves at 5 eighths of an inch and I just pulled out my basting. So I've given myself 3 eighths of an inch, 3 eighths of an inch, that's 3 quarters, and I've given myself the same thing. So I've just by, by letting that 5 eighths inch seam out to a quarter of an inch, I've already given myself quite a bit of extra mobility this way and that way. And if you need more mobility than that, you open up the underarm, and you've got a big gap under there. And this is when we put in a gusset. A lot of people make gussets that are little diamonds. Um, but I've developed this kind of curved oyster shaped gusset. Um, I've used it in a lot of my own personal theatrical costumes and it gives you a really nice uh, bit of mobility under your arm um, and helps it lay smoother 
when your arm is down. I now have the gusset sewn into the sleeve and you can see actually this this offers an incredible amount of mobility. You put the arm down, it still has the nice drape of a modern sleeve, and it's a wonderful trick. So you can make a gusset like this. It's about three inches high. It's about six or seven inches across. And just, you know, it's just a gradual curve. And just remember that since we've let the sleeves seam out, so it's only a quarter of an inch now, you're going to be sewing in this gusset with a quarter of an inch. And it actually fits better with that smaller seam allowance. So I hope I have helped you all with sleeve and arm mobility because we do need to lift our arms in life, don't we?